good morning. How are you all? Just check we're live. Once it starts clicking in. Uh, happy Saturday everyone. Gorgeous day here. The weather is absolutely beautiful. So I put on my little blingy earrings from yesterday just to uh, feel like I've got a bit more dressed up. Um, Tick of wearing lounging gear just around the house. So I thought I'd make a little bit of an effort today. Um, I hope you're all doing okay. So we're gonna learn how to make our own beads again today. So I showed you the erudite beads a few days ago. Hi, good morning, Jill, Jan, Paula, Natalie, Alicia. Got some of the usual suspects in here already this morning. Hi, morning, Camille. Um, gorgeous day here today. Um, we've had some miserable weather, but it's been good for the garden. Um, so back on with all the DIY today. Once I've done this, I think I'm going to have a good old clear out and uh, get the garage and the garden sorted. Good morning, Joe. Hi, Antida, Sandra. Hi, Di. Good morning, everyone. So we had um, some erudite beads a few days ago, making our own beads to add on to either a pre-bought chain or onto your herringbone chains. Um, hi, good morning, Jan. Send the sun to, De to Derbyshire, please. Oh, I will try my best, but I'm gonna try and hold on to it as much as I can too. Um, Natalie says it's beautiful where she is as well. Good morning, Lynn. Um, so yes, we made our own beads. Yesterday we were using our um, crystal arrows or tree beads, depending on which way you put them. We made some lovely earrings and also a long chain necklace. So today we're going for more of a choker look and we're going to cover some wooden beads. So wooden beads like these are great. You can use them in so many different crafting projects, but they lend themselves beautifully to be beaded around. So today I'm gonna to use Super Duos. <laughs> uh, looks like my mum's having quite a morning. She said, morning, honey, just dyed my hair. Uh oh, <laughs> we'll have a FaceTime after this, mum. We'll see how it goes. I think my dad was actually dyeing it for her this morning. It's so cute. She's um, been suffering with her roots since lockdown, so I think she's finally given in. <laughs> Ironic, considering the hairdressers will probably be open soon. Um, good morning, Tracy. Hi, Linda. Um, okay, lovely. Yeah, lots of you have beautiful sunshine. Excellent. Okay, so these wooden beads are perfect to bead around. So I'm going to use Super Duos and two sizes of RC beads today. We've got um, actually three sizes. We've got eights, elevens and fifteens. And this is what we're going to make. So in your kits, and we do have full kits available for this, because you're gonna need quite a few components. They actually come with a choker necklace, which have a really fantastic screw clasp up at the top. So they're actually really super easy to put on. And I'll show you this more when we look down at the mat, but you can see it's just got a little barrel that will screw into um, the other side, which means that you can add all sorts of beads onto these. So if you do have your erudite beads from the other day, you could um, perhaps use some of those. And then you'll just pop that around your neck, screw that back on so it's really nice and easy to wear as well and obviously super strong. So your kit does come with a full necklace band. You've got three of your large wooden beads, like I had just shown you, like so. And then you have your super duos and um, your seed beads as well. So there's enough in there to make three. You can get extra wooden beads if you would like them. They're only a pound for three, which I think is phenomenal value. Now I've put the link in the um, description of this video, but I know Kitty's watching, so she'll pop it up a little bit as well. Um, and there are um, lots of different kits that you can buy. So we've got a beautiful turquoise. There is an amethyst in there as well. There's also a monochrome, obviously my favorite favorite but I'm going to go with blue today because we made a lot of black yesterday as you can tell um and there's also a lovely green in there too so there's lots of different ways that you can use these I also think they would make really great tree decorations um I know we were talking about Christmas I'm in the festive spirit because I'm going to be on Crate and Craft um this week on Wednesday and we've launched Christmas I know I know it's June but we need to get ahead <laughs> um good morning Dorothy hi Jackie Gwen Jane says, please stop tempting me. I know there's so many goodies, isn't there? Good morning, Maxine. Hi, Lindsay. Lovely. So I'm going to turn you down on the mat. Now, there is a free PDF for today, actually, before I do this. Um, so if you have the materials at home, then you can download the PDF for free. That will go back up to 1.99 tomorrow. 
Um, and we also have our kits available on offer as well, um, which is really fantastic. And there is also a code that you can use today. I've just seen that Kitty's been putting up the link for us. If you use the code SUPER, because we're using super duos. If you use the code super, you will obviously, um, you will also get a discount at the checkout as well. So you will get 15% off all of your kits and that's gonna be until Monday. So Simon's been super generous this morning. Thank you, Simon. Um, and of course, like I said, we've got the um, wooden beads in there as well. So, um, you will notice there are um, a few different prices on the website with the Super Duo kits, and that reflects the finishes on the beads. So, some of them just have a matte finish, some of them are more metallic. There's lots of different finishes in there, and sometimes with different finishes, that, that re uh, reflects in the price as well. So you do pay a little bit more for some fancier beads, but we can all understand why. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn you down onto the mat and we're going to get going. Now, it is... A little bit more of a time uh, consuming make today. Um, it's a beautiful project to do. I'm going to probably show you one side of the bead. It's a lot of pattern repeat and we're doing basically a circular peyote but um, obviously changing the sizes of the beads. Okay so I'll probably be able to show you one side. We'll see how we go for time. Um, Jan says, do the wooden beads come in different sizes? We do have lots of different wooden beads on the website. For these kits, they're all in the same size. So you'll get three of your same size. Um, but if you type in wooden beads on the website, you will see that we've got quite a different array of things in there, in there as well. There's some different colours, so you could even mix and match some of those for your kits too. Okay, so I'm going to flip you over. Let's get going. Okay, so I'll show you the um, the actual clasp itself a little better now as well. Let's have a little look. So this is on the monochrome set. So you can see it's got this lovely barrel. And if you start twisting it and you find that it doesn't come undone, you just need to turn it around, you're twisting the wrong side. So the entire barrel will come out of that screw through the middle. And then you can take your beads off of the smaller side, obviously the one that doesn't have the barrel on. And these are the beads that we're gonna be creating. So you can see, you'll still see a little bit of the um, bead exposed at the edge. If you have things like your alcohol markers I know I was showing you how to color some of your metal components earlier in the week you could actually color these beads as well so that you could have a tonal finish on the inside but once they're on even if you added a little bead or a little stopper with your seed beads like we did with the erudites so you can start taking some of these techniques that you've been learning and start mixing and matching start um, using all of these things that you've been learning and start integrating them all together okay so these are the ones that we're going to do I have already threaded on I've got 35 of my beads on here you need 40 in this pattern I've still got little bits from my head and eye pins around from yesterday um, so I've already pre-threaded uh, my super duo so I'm going to move you a little bit closer Okie dokie. So with your super duos, um, it's really important because we are going to be using both sides of these holes. So can you see they've got two holes in them, which is going to make it really nice and easy to create this sort of um, barrel effect around the middle of our beads. What you want to make sure as you're picking them up is that both holes are completely clear. I did have one a moment ago. Sometimes you just get little shards of colour or... Um, like a little fleck inside them, you want to make sure when you're picking them up that all of the holes are exposed. And now I can't find the one, so I'm hoping I don't thread it on, that didn't have both of them. So if you can, turn them up onto your bead mat so that you can see all of it, and then you will be able to make sure that we're not going to have any problems going forward. So I'm just going to pick up another five. At this point, it doesn't matter four, five, what side you are going through. We just want to add them all on through one hole. Now I'm leaving my thread on the bobbin because I'm going to cover one side of my bead with um, the seed beads and the a generous arm span of thread that I've got on my needle. When you come to the other side, you can then actually just work from your bobbin. So you could do another arm span on the other side and carry on 
using those. Um, that does mean that you won't need to use too much thread and you will be able to have enough on the other side so that you don't have to join a thread in there either, which is going to be um, a lot easier and it's going to keep your work really nice and neat. Um, someone was asking, I think, what size the wooden beads were. Um, these are 22 millimetre. The hole is four millimetre. They need to have a large hole in them because they need to be able to go on to the side of our necklace. So when you're um, covering beads, you just want to make sure that you've got a hole big enough for the necklace that you're going to be threading them onto. And these will go on absolutely perfectly. So um, this, I guess, is the most unique component really to our necklaces. You need to be able to have a great thread, um, a great wire to thread them onto for your necklaces. Okay, um, lots of you are messaging about orders, which is lovely. Kitty is on here. So if you've got any questions, she will answer as we go as well. Thank you, Kitty. Although it gives you a weekend off, we still sit and, <laughs> and go through each other's videos so that we can make sure that you get all of the right answers. Now, I want to make this into a loop. So I'm going to run through the same bead of my super duos that I have threaded them onto. So I'm gonna go back through the same hole. Now you'll know that normally I would um, suspend my beads on my fingers to um, give myself that little tightrope tension. I'm just gonna do this little step by step because I have 40 beads on here, so it is a lot. So you'll see you can drop it, which means that the second hole is going to hang underneath them. And then your finger should give you enough tension just to be able to come through those. Because the beads aren't regular in shape, they have that little raised center. They do cluster together a little bit, and I'm just taking care that I'm not piercing any of my thread because I'm going to pull this into a nice circle. So just take your time with it. Nice and steady will do it. Step by step, just a few beads at a time and running through the same hole, which will tie all of this together and give us our circle. Bring that tail through. So you can see the ones that I have gone through are just sat down here at the bottom. And then the ones I still have to do are up at the top. Like so. Now, if any of you haven't worked with Super Duo beads before, they give you the most gorgeous finish. It's, um, I always find working with shaped beads and uh, two hole beads are really fantastic when you're doing weaving projects because it just doesn't take as long as seed beads. You do get a gorgeous textured finish. And of course it means it's not gonna take as long as just using your seed beads. So we get a really nice finish. Okay, so these are my last ones. Gonna come all the way through and you'll see now I'm meeting my tail again. So I've gone all the way through just one hole twice. And now we're gonna pull this nice and tight. So just make sure that none of your beads get stuck in the middle. Pull this tail tightly, bringing it all together and we will have our circle. Okay, so it looks a bit higgledy-piggledy at the moment. We're gonna sort all of this out in a minute. Oh, Kitty says watching these videos is the only time she can see me at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I know. See, normally I would go down to the warehouse um, for a good few days. Kitty and I will catch up, work in the warehouse. Gosh, I don't know, we probably end up doing, oh, I don't know, like 10, 11 hour days maybe. And then home for a nice glass of wine and a little catch up. So I've missed that. I don't think I've, oh, well, I haven't seen you for months since the beginning of the year. Okay, so our tails are now caught up um, in my circle. Now we need to go and fill the gaps in between the beads that we have just added. So I'm gonna keep my bobbin tail nice and tight on my tension. I'm gonna pull my second thread through, which will give me the complete circle. I'm not gonna worry about it too much um, for now because we'll be able to fill these gaps in a minute. And then you'll see that we've got the second hole on the outer side of our circle. So I'm going to step up through the second hole. So my thread is exiting from the bottom here. I'm gonna go through the same bead that I'm exiting from, making sure we don't get any beads caught up in this loop. And so now I have changed direction and I'm gonna fill the gap in between my other beads. So for this, I'm actually gonna pick up a different color bead so that hopefully, although they probably look quite samely on the video, 
actually if I use uh, well we should be able to see I was gonna say we could use a darker one but let's try this one because this will look nice for summer um, okay so now what I'm gonna do is actually fill the gap in between these uh, super duos so what I want to be doing is having all of these beads coming out onto this side and we're going to fill the gap in between the holes. So I'm going to pick up one of my different coloured beads and I'm going to go through the next super duo from my first round. And can you see that that's going to start giving me that lovely little um, double row using my new colour, picking up a bead and going through the next. And then again, just make sure that you're not going to have any beads captured in those loops. Okay, can you see this? Actually, I've on the wrong. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Let me unthread this one. Sorry, I'm doing my middle row first, not my edge row. And I've got a knot up in my thread. Let me just take my... Oh, anyone who was watching the other day will know that needles and threads at the moment are not my friends. So I'm just going to find another needle because I've ended up with a big old knot up here. See, it happens to us all. Doesn't matter how many years you've been beading for. You all get in knots at one point or another very frustrating <laughs> hold on one sec right okay I've taken off my thread and <laughs> Camille's saying no not needles <laughs> my um, arch nemesis this week by the looks of it absolute nightmare The joys of live, eh? Now, um, I was actually using a pre-wax thread with this needle the other day. So the hole itself actually ends up with some sort of bits and pieces in the middle. And if I am frantically searching my bead mat to see if I can find my other needle. Bear with me, guys. One minute. Where are my other needles? Why is it when you want to be totally prepared, days like these are going to throw you off? Try, put it, try putting the thread tight between your finger and thumb and take the needle to it. Do you know, I can never do that, Diane. I can't ever do it like that. I don't know why. Maybe I should try for you. But I've never had much success. Sorry guys, bear with me one minute. Won't take me long. Someone was saying the other day they really struggle with their needle and thread and it took them 40 minutes to thread the needle. I'm, uh, I'm hoping that that isn't going to be the case now. <laughs> I'm nearly there. It's just so frustrating when, you're, when your thread um, actually splits as well. You end up in all sorts of mess, don't you? I'm nearly there guys, bear with. Oi, oi, oi. Why is it whenever we have a tight time span, it's always going to be tricky? Uh, Kitty needs to source a maker. Oh, I've just missed it. <laughs> Your, uh, I think maybe you meant an EDI needle threader. After 40 minutes, I would have lost the will to live. I know, Natalie. I don't think I could do it for 40 minutes. Sorry, guys. One minute. I can't find my other needle, which is so frustrating. I'm so nearly there. Oh dear, Sarah, I will send you up some needles in the next parcel. Yes, please, kitty. Um, I'm just wondering if there were any in these sets, actually. I've got one naughty needle and it's the only one I've 
blimmin' got to hand. Oh, I did have one on my bed mat last night. Hold on, hold on. Right. I found a new one. Okay. This just sums up exactly how my day is going to go today. Yesterday I was losing my voice. Today, needles are being naughty. Right, I think we're in. Are we in? Yes, we're in. Okay, I found a new needle. Radio. Right, guys, we are nearly there. Okay, so what we want to do is actually flip flop. Sorry, guys, I know it's frustrating. Um, nothing is more frustrating than me doing it, so <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, so what we're going to do is actually flip flop these because we're going to have um, one of these as our middle row and one as the outside row. So I'm going to pick up my new colours. So we're missing one of the super duos that we have in our row. And this outside row is becoming our new one. Can you see this? There we go. Whereas I had doubles on before. So one will flip flop left, one will go to the right, we'll pick up a new colour and we go through the middle. Please don't, not again. Okay, so you can see that I'm holding my beadwork. My um, bobbin thread is over to the left, so I'm going to keep that tight um, around my finger. This lovely little flat uh, section of uh, beadwork that we're getting now will start to come in from the other side. I'm just going to pull this tightly so that we have our completed circle, like so. And again, you're just going to flip flop over. So one to the left, the next one to the right, pick up your bead and through that hole. To the left, to the right, and pick up that bead. Okay, so really, actually, I've only got one new colour here, but I wanted to show you the difference between the two. So it's not going to give me a symmetrical finish, but at least this way you can actually see where your new beads are coming in. If you ever struggle um, with some of your bead patterns, do a little tester section like this using um, different colour beads. And that way you'll actually see step by step, just for you to master the actual pattern, where your new beads are sitting. And a lot of the time it will help you um, just get to grips with it. If you're just doing a little tester like this, once you know what you're doing and you're happy with it, you can just unthread your needle, <laughs> providing you can thread it again easily, um, unthread your needle and obviously all you're losing is a little bit of thread. If you wanted to keep it as a little tester, then of course you can do that. Just use it as a little practice and just make sure that you're always flip-flopping these beads. So one to the left, one to the right, and filling the gap in between. And you'll see I've got my fingers in the middle of the circle, which is just gonna stop any of my super duos from the base of my circle getting caught up. And I can easily put these onto my fingers and start adding them on. And again, just be checking that you've always got the second hole exposed for your next round, because if you thread on all of your beads and then you find that you've got one bead generally the super duos I mean they're a beautiful quality so it's very rare that you would get one that um that has a closed hole or something that's maybe in the middle if you've got a bead reamer or you can poke your needle through there nine times out of ten you can clear that out but you just want to make sure because there's nothing more frustrating than going all the way through your pattern getting to one side or get your next round and your next step and then realising that actually you can't do it because there's a filled hole. So you're just doing that little due diligence before you start and it will make a difference to your pattern. And hopefully make it less stressful. So I'm nearly finished all the way around the circle. This is it for the super duos and then we're going to move on to some of our seed beads. So we've got um, a size eight. So we're effectively going to do a nice little um, circular peyote, which is exactly what this is using this, the um, super duos. So if you do a circular peyote, it basically gives you a flat stitch down at the bottom or a base row. 
And then what we're doing is moving around our circle, filling all the gaps from the ones before with our next set of beads. So you can see with this one, we're doing it with obviously our super duos. On the next one, we're going to start filling the holes around our circle with our size eight seed beads. And when you get to your last super duos, we're nearly there. We're just going to change direction again, which will secure our threads into place. And then we'll start filling the gaps. Over to the left, over to the right. And you'll um, see Kitty has worked out, this is the, the bonus with buying um, kits as opposed to just the components, I guess. And when you get things like the, the PDF download, because all of the measurements are already worked out for you, which of course is really helpful. These 22 millimeter beads are gonna hold 40 of your super duos and you want to make sure that you have the right amount. So I had pre-threaded mine and counted mine before I came live because you know me, I can't count and talk at the same time. And then we are going to add on our last one. So if you didn't have 40, this part of it wouldn't work at all. So you can see now when I bring this one in, it's going to close up my circle. And because I've got my 40, it's going to be the right size for my bead. Um, Jodie's saying, at what point do you um, check the size of your bead? It's going to be the next one, the next step. So um, just like I was saying, my 40 will fit perfectly around here. Kitty has already designed this and worked this out. When we do our first couple of rows of seed beads, we'll pop our bead in. Uh, so I guess a bit like when you're doing a cabochon um, and doing a, a beaded bezel, then um, you will know... So if you're going to redesign this and you're going to do it for your own size beads, then um, check on your first row. So that 40, put that around your bead and make sure that it is the very centre uh, diameter. Uh, oh no, what is it if it goes all the way around? Circumference? Yeah. So you want to make sure that it fits the circumference of your bead. Okay, so now we're going to start adding on our size 8. So I've brought together my entire circle. What I'm going to do is um, I'm coming out of my inner bead at the moment. So that's my first colour. I'm going to step up also through my first super duo bead that I've added in this third round. So this is my outer bead. And then I'm going to go through the same hole in the opposite direction. Okay. So I've completed my circle. I've come up through my first bead. And now I'm going to change direction and go through the outer hole. Now we're going to fill these with our size 8 seed beads. So let's get these out of the way because I've finished with these. Your size 8 seed beads are the next ones in. And then we're going to pick one up and we're going to go through the hole of the next super duo bead. And you'll see when I pull this tightly, it's going to fill in this gap. So once I've done this row, I'm going to add my bead in because then we're going to start actually housing the bead inside of our bead work. I've still got my bobbin on the other side. You can hold that for tighter tension. You can keep on pulling these around. Don't worry that it's going to pull this one out because when we bead on the other side, we'll get that nice and tight. Again, I'm just poising it on the end of my finger and pulling these tightly in. Now we're gonna start graduating down in our bead sizes. So we're gonna go from a size eight to a size 11 to a size 15. And that's how we'll get the lovely dome effect to go all the way around our bead. <laughs> Jane says, damn, new bead kit one, willpower zero. <laughs> Jane, you're funny. <laughs> oh, brilliant. These I think are so lovely because you can actually personalize um, your take on these as well. You can mix and match the colours once you know the pattern. Um, you can get extra wooden beads. They're only a pound for three of them, which I think is great value for money because when you turn them into something as beautiful as this with the beadwork around the outside, um, it just looks like such an expensive component. Now, if you didn't want to thread these straight onto the cord or a chain like you've got in the set you could even make these a feature tassel bead so do you remember yesterday when we were using the crystal beads we created a longer necklace no clasp up at the top what I would be really tempted to do with these if I take one of these beads off 
what I'd be really tempted to do with these is have a bead cap top and bottom and have a tassel coming out the bottom and have your chain coming out the top. So then it's a lovely component to have on a longer necklace as well. Oh, Joe's saying, sorry, I'm late. Had a Zoom meeting. Oh, I hope it went well. I'm assuming that's for work on a Saturday. Or was it just a nice personal one? Hopefully that was good, but welcome. Nice to have you here. You've missed all my thread dramas again, so you're lucky. <laughs> I guess the bonus is once this video is finished, we'll upload it onto the Facebook page and then you can either just mute me or you can fast forward through my rubbish little sections and then you can have a nice, perfect, professional tutorial. Okay nearly done on this round and then we're going to be ready to start adding in our size 11 seed beads now i'm going to show you the free pdf in a moment as well it already looks like a lovely pattern doesn't it so if you wanted to keep some of your bead exposed you could perhaps even just make a little um, rim to go around the middle. So if you've got decorative wooden beads, that would look really nice as well. There's lots of different things that you can do. Okay, so in your free PDF pattern, can you see? It's really super easy to follow. So now that we've got our triple layer of our beads, we're also gonna do two of our size eights. So that's gonna give us a nice tight section in the middle. And then we're gonna start filling in with our size 11s. So I'm gonna work around Let's have a little look. I'm going to work on my bobbin side. Oh, guys, I've got to thread my needle again. Oy, oy, oy. So I'm going to take an arm span on the other side so that you've got enough to finish off with your bead. Cut this from my bobbin. Hopefully, now I've got my good needle, we're all going to be okay. Oh, look at that. See, look, I'm not as rubbish as I sometimes make out. <laughs> what is it they say? A, a workman never blames his tools. <laughs> Can I get away with just doing that? <laughs> okay, so we're going to step out onto our second section here. So as you can see, I'm exiting from the bead here. I'm just going to go through one more, actually. Or two more, rather, because I want to be on my outside bead. Just to pull that really nice and tightly. And then we'll add our size eights on this side as well, because this is going to give us a really nice tighter um, tension on our middle and then we can add our bead in. So I'm going to step out onto the far side of my super duo that I am exiting from. And I'm wondering, should I put this in before we go or should we do it afterwards? Let's do it afterwards. Keep this nice and tight. And now I'm going to fill in my size eights on the far side as well. So we're going to pick up size eight and come through. So it's a bit easier going on this way because I'd reversed the um, thread path on the other side. This time I'm actually working away from me, which is my preferred choice actually. And you can see that it happens a lot quicker picking up these beads and coming all the way through. Now, once we've done this, like I said, we're gonna start graduating down to our size 11s and then also onto our size 15s, which will just enclose the lovely little dome around our bead. And the bonus is, like I said, Kitty's already done the whole pattern, all the bead counts, all the hard bit is done for you. You've just got to follow the instructions. And she has really lovely um, written and pictured instructions like I just showed you. So it's nice and easy to follow. I'm very much of a visual learner. Um, I'm a bit of a nightmare really. If it comes to reading instructions, it's probably the same for flat pack furniture as well, which we've done quite a lot of. We've had to build a lot of things since we've moved house. But I tend to look at the pictures. I'll follow what I think the picture is telling me to do. And if it goes wrong, I'll go back and read the written instruction. <laughs> Does anybody else do that? I'm just a very visual learner. I can't very often read something and determine what it's actually asking me to do. I need to see it. 
Um, and I think quite a few creative people are like that. I think that's why a lot of the videos are really good because you might have the instructions at home as well. And if you just get that little bit stuck, just seeing somebody do it, I think um, very often makes a lot more sense. Okay, so we're going to start adding in our next beads. So I'm going to step up, and this is always the case when you're doing circular POT. I'm going to step up through my size eight bead, like so. And now I'm gonna be ready to start adding in my next beads. And for this, it's gonna pull it quite tight and we're going to fill the gap in between our size eights with our size 11s. Um, Doris said that makes a very nice ring. Yeah, actually this would be beautiful if you made it in the right size. Oh yeah, isn't that gorgeous? And we've only used four rows of beads. So that would be really lovely. Right, let's pop this in and make sure that I've got the right tension on both sides. Pull that nice and tight. Now, I'm, I'm the same with cabochons. I don't do too well actually beading around. So I'm gonna leave this one out and I'm gonna do one more row because that's just gonna give me a little bit of a tighter finish. Hopefully that's gonna be okay. Right, so changing our seed beads to size 11s. Now, if you haven't worked with seed beads before, or for those of you that don't know, the larger seed bead is the lower number. So my size 8s are bigger, my size 11s in this case are my medium, and my size 15s are the smaller. Now, um, the size of them and the number count is actually the amount that you can fit into... I can never remember if it's a centimetre. I think it's a centimetre. Um, I always used to think it was the amount that weighed a gram, but it's not. Um, okay, so size eight beads, picking up, I'm exiting from the size eight, picking up the size 11. We're gonna miss this super duo that's in the middle and we're gonna go through our next size eight. And what that will do is just sit that size 11 directly on top of our super duos like so. An inch, Anne, thank you. I am all over the place at the moment. I've got, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven TV shows coming up this week, um, which is a bit crazy. So I've been taking deliveries for all of those. <laughs> We've had um, my stepdaughter here for a week. She's gone back now. I'm seeing my nephews tomorrow, guys. I'm so excited. Um, socially distant. Um, but we're going to go and meet them um, on one of our little dog walky beaches, um, which will be really lovely. Um, so, yeah, there's so much going on at the moment. We've got DIY day coming up today. So um, a day in the garden and sorting out the garage. My head is just all over the place. I'm a bit of a sieve head at the moment, as I would say. OK, so we're rotating round. All the way around the circle and picking up our size 11s. Now we're actually gonna need to do four rows of this before we start moving down to our size 15s. So I will show you, it's exactly the same um, for your circular peyote, stepping up on each row. So you're filling the gap from the previous row are all the shows different? Which days? Um, yes, Diane. So I've actually got um, Craft Buddy shows Monday and Thursday. And I've got the Totally Beads show on Wednesday. So I think my first one on Monday is at 11.15. That's for a double hour. And then I'll be back in the evening. Wednesday, I've just got nine o'clock. And then Thursday is Crystal Art. I think. Although you've all seen how uh, unreliable I am at the moment. So I will pop it all on my Facebook page so that you can see. Okay, so I am going to pop underneath this size 8 bead because that's my last one. I've picked up my 11. I'm going to go underneath my size 8, which will then fill all of these gaps. And you'll see why your bead count is so important because um, you always need to work with your even number like we had with our uh, super duos in the middle. Otherwise, it's going to throw everything off. And now I need to step up for my next row. So I'm going to take my needle through that first size 11 bead that I added. Okay, now I have stepped up and I am ready to continue my next row. So again, I'm going to now pick up an 11 and then I will fill the gap 
in between each of my size 11s from before. So you can see at the moment it's quite a big gap, but when we pull that tightly, it's going to start to close in that circle. And have we reached tight enough on this side yet that I can add my bead in confidently? Mm, probably gonna do a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to pick up another size 11, fill that gap. Now you can see your thread path is already gonna show you where you need to go because it gives you like this little pico edging all the way along. So where they're sticking out, we need to fill this gap with our bead. So picking up your size 11 and going through the next size 11. So that was our beads from the previous round. And can you see when I pull this tightly, it's, oh, it's gonna start to close up that circle. Like so. Sounds like the dogs are raiding the bedroom above me. They've obviously stolen something, now he's running into the garden. <laughs> taking advantage of the fact that I can't chase him. Okay, so taking that thread out of the way, you don't wanna pierce the thread. So what you can always do, you can see that the thread is telling you where it wants to go. You can always just clamp that down with your hand, move it out the way, which will expose that bead. Like so. Moving it out the way, because you don't want to pierce it, and through up the top. And then you want four rows of this. So this will be our second row. We'll do this twice more, and then I'll be able to move down to my size 15s, which will give us the complete closed circle. So as you can see, although it looks like quite an intricate woven bead, the process is just a pattern repeat. It's actually really simple. Once you've mastered working around this circle and your bead tension, your thread tension, I should say, it's actually really nice and simple. Now, don't forget, um, there is the discount code. Uh, Kitty has pinned it at the bottom of the page for us. Um, at checkout, just add in the code SUPER. So um, all capital letters, you will get 15% off any of the kits in the video. There are five kits in total. So that's going to equate to a really nice little saving. Um, Ian's just said, Lord help me, I've just bought the hematite set. Needle, need a needle and thread now and a thimble. Oh, you're going to have lots of fun. Um, I'm actually using hematite beads tomorrow. Um, I know we're talking about hematite colour here, but you've just reminded me. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing beaded kumihimo. So haven't done that with you for quite a long time. Um, got some gorgeous hematite beads to be showing you. Um, and I'm going to show you beaded kumihimo. So something totally different tomorrow. Still a bit of weaving, but not with a needle and thread. Uh, so, hey, I'm going to be okay. Um, which is good. <laughs> beaded kumihimo is really beautiful. For those of you who haven't seen it before, um, it's a process of weaving together larger threads. Uh, to give you a really beautiful, um, if you're doing things like herringbone, it gives you a very similar sort of effect. So herringbone with your seed beads gives you a very similar effect, but with much larger beads. Uh, so it will give you a beaded uh, rope, basically. Okay, so I've got to the end here, which will um, be again stepping up. So can you see this size 11 is the um, row that I am working on at the moment. So I'm gonna come up through this one, but I want to step up for my next row as well to position me ready to fill the gaps in my next ones. So I'm gonna go through the 11, which will continue my row for this one now. And then I'm also gonna go up through, so I just do it in one movement, up through the first size 11 of my current row. And then that will position me ready for my next one. And again, I'm gonna pull this nice and tightly. And can you see that it's beginning to close up that circle and it's gonna to start to dome over the very top. Lucy says she can't get her head around Kumihimo. I'll see you tomorrow then, Lucy. We will sort that out for you. And Marie says she struggles with the beads. So um, yeah, tomorrow guys, in that case, will hopefully be a really good one for you. Okay, so I'm going to now continue 
this will be how many 11s have we done this will be my third row and then we've just got one more to do so you want four rows of your size 11s and again I'm just filling those gaps in between so you can actually see where the gaps are they give you that little pico edging the previous row so you can see where the gaps are making it really nice and easy the gaps become a little less apparent when you get down to your size 15s but by then you're going to be a pro and you know exactly what you're doing so as soon as that bead is just poking out we'll just go through okay we've got one more row to do after this I did say that we would probably only finish one side of our bead but obviously the other side is a complete pattern repeat so we will be all good and just by doing that size eight row on the other side you'll see that it's just given me that nicer tighter tension my super duos aren't flopping around all over the place it's just given me that nice ring to work around pull some of my tail out I could see lots of your comments coming through but I think that Kitty is also answering for me as well Oh, Diane says, love it, but it's making me feel a bit sick going round and round. Oh, no. Yeah, if you suffer for, with like motion sickness, this might not be the one we do. Just go round and round in circles. And you can see what I'm actually doing with my needle is I'm just because the the beads get that little bit closer and closer I'm um, sort of putting my needle into the bead but I'm scraping once I'm in the bead I'm actually kind of just scraping the top of it which will also mean you won't catch or pierce your thread from the row before so it's almost like you're hooking your needle into the bead and running it around the top. That way it's also bringing it out slightly just to be able to make filling that gap a little bit easier. Now you'll see as we get smaller and smaller, it becomes a little bit harder to differentiate the first row to the second row. But once you meet that last bead in this round, you will see that the step up is really obvious because um, you can't actually go any further in. So we're nearly there now. Almost there. So here we are. You'll see that when I fill this gap here, the next bead is already there. So this is the point where you step up. So you go through the bead in the row that you have been working with and up through the next. Oh, hang on. Look, I've got two beads on there. Close save because I do not want to unthread my needle again up through there, stepping up to the top. The bead gods are not with me today. I'm just gonna save this before I get a big knot in here. So what's happened is the bead has actually got tangled in so it's effectively made a little knot around the bead. So all I did was use my needle to just bring that through. I noticed, luckily, before I pulled it too tightly and you can undo that. So it's just where the, the bead actually gets kind of knotted up in the thread. So you'll see I just didn't pull it tightly, took my needle, pulled out some of that extra thread. It happens quite a lot. And to be honest, uh, one, two, three, one more row. Um, although it's a bit embarrassing getting in knots and not being able to thread your thread your needle when you've got so many of you watching I do I don't mind it when it happens because it just shows you guys that these things happen I mean I've been beading for 18 years um it happens to all of us sometimes you just have an off day sometimes things just don't work so don't think that you can't do something or that you're doing something wrong just because you get into a knot or into a bit of a pickle I'm sure Kitty will tell you as well it happens to her too in fact it's happened to her on some of the lives as well so um there are um it happens to all of us okay um remember you do have your free pdf downloads today as well 
Um, so you can pop onto the website, you can download the pattern for this set for free. It will go back up to $1.99 tomorrow. And then we also have the kits. You'll get three of your wooden beads included. You'll get your super duos. You will also get three sizes of your seed beads. So your eights, your 11s and your 15s. Um, and of course you get your necklace wire too. So this is now my fourth row and you can count your beads. So that's my first row. If, you, if you've lost count like me, obviously I'm still just chatting away. That's my first row. So that's one, that's two, that's three. And then this is my fourth. So this is our final one. And of course, Kitty will give you all the bead counts on your instructions. Pull that one in tightly. And you can almost feel the beads just pop into place. Brenda says it's the best way to learn. <laughs> it happens to us all. Hopefully I can, you can um, watch me make the mistakes and then you won't. <laughs> Sacrificing myself for the good of our students. <laughs> oh dear, got to put a spin on it and laugh, eh? So I am nearly finished and you will find obviously what we're actually doing each time we step up, you're using one less bead as well. So um, here I am again. You can see that it gives you a slightly bigger gap. It's my last bead through the row before. And actually, it's getting a little bit tighter now. So I'm going to do this in two moves. So I'm going to go through that row before and then I'm going to step up. Like so. And you can see that it's starting to give me that lovely closed dome effect. Okay, now we're going to start working on our size 15s. And again, we'll have, I think it's just four rows of these ones. So size 15s are the smallest of the beads that we're going to be working with. And as you can see, if I pop this in here now, we don't have very much to go to close up around the outside. Okay, for those of you who have not been watching for long, because I've just seen the numbers have jumped up a little bit, this is what we're actually making. So you've got your super duo beads in the middle and we are beading around wooden beads to give a really beautiful component that is um, pretty personalised. It just gives you that really lovely handmade finish. So if you're making these for presents um, or to sell, I think the sets are, are pretty well priced that you would be able to make a profit on things like this as well. It just gives you a much more handmade finish, which is really nice. And wooden beads are so inexpensive that it's going to give you a really nice handmade finish to a bead that ordinarily you might not necessarily know what to do with other than just threading it onto your beadwork. So with my size 15s, this is going to close down our circle even tighter. How do we find the pattern on your website, please? I'll ask Kitty to um, put up a link to it, but it's also in the description of the website. I um, The description of the video, sorry, I've put the link to the website. Let me just show you, because I've got my iPad here. One sec. Um, if you go on to totallybeads.co.uk, um, in the category section, there is, where are we? Facebook tutorials. You just click on there and this will bring up all of the tutorials that we have been doing for the last 13 weeks. So we've got the Super Duo bead today. Yesterday was the Crystal Tree Jewellery. The day before was the Czech um, Crescent beads. We were making our own beads. So if you like today, that will also show you an easier way of making your own beads. Graduated fans, wire work, cabochons. And then it will also take you back over the months as well. Uh, May, April and March. So for today, we're just going to click onto the Super Duos. This is your free PDF download. So you can click on that. You will um, check out uh, your basket. If you're adding in any of the kits, don't forget to add in the code SUPER at checkout and that will give you 15% off of these. The price difference in the sets uh, reflects on the finish of the beads. Check out your basket and your free PDF will get downloaded to you uh, in your emails and this is what you're going to be following. So you can see step by step, written and pictured as well. I could see quite a few people saying that they too don't uh, 
read written instructions. We follow all the pictures. And that's why Kitty spends so long as well doing all of her beautiful diagrams. It's not an easy task um, drawing these diagrams and she does it all by hand in the software so that you've got the most accurate visual uh, steps so that you can see exactly what her kits are asking you to do, which I think is really lovely. And I know so many of you appreciate it. I do, Kitty, because I'm a very visual learner. Okay, so we'll keep on pulling these down and we're on to our size 15s. So we'll just have four more rows of these to do. And then you will be able to repeat this pattern on the other side and you will have your entire bead enclosed in. And remember, like I said, because they're wooden beads, now these do have a little bit of a polished finish, so I'm not sure how well it would actually hold on to a paint or a stain or, um, you know, your alcohol inks and things like that. I know a lot of you are crafters in other areas. Um, you could also colour them so that you've got a really nice base. Okay, so here I am ready to step up again. You'll see it just gives you that slightly bigger gap than before through the bead. So that's through my size 11 on the row that we are working on. And again, this is getting a bit tighter in my tension, a little bit harder to do double steps. So I'll go through that size 11. You'll see where my seed bead, uh, where my thread is exiting from. And then I'll go through my first size 15. Like so. Now I'll be able, that is my stepping up. Now it's put me in the right position to do the next ones. I might actually only do one more row of this. Oh yeah, we've been going for an hour, look. So actually, it's not too long a make. Obviously, I've been chatting away to you guys. I would say that this is probably half an hour's worth of work, if that. Um, so an hour to make a bead, I think, is really fun because they look so intricate. They always remind me of like Fabergé eggs when you when you look at them when they're finished. It's just got that like really beautiful, intricate finish. Just going to pull that nice and tightly and you'll see that you're getting this beautiful domed effect. Um, it's this kind of stuff that when I started beading, I just looked at it and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm never going to have the patience or the skills to be able to weave like this. It's so intricate. It must take hours and hours to do. Um, and it really doesn't. Um, you've seen that once you have mastered going round in a circle and then knowing which bead to step up on, that's the only uh, technique that you need to learn. So it really is quite simple, but deceptively so. It looks very intricate and difficult. And when actually, it's like I said, you have that, um, I always say you have a light bulb moment. You see it made or you see a pattern and you think, aha, that's it. It's really not as difficult as you think. Just keep on making sure that that thread is out of the way and you're pulling through. So you've always got that nice tight tension. Um, I actually find that with projects like this, so I actually put it through the bead and I don't know if you notice the way I do it, but I then use my um, pinky to push up and through. So I'm not actually pulling it really tightly all the time. If you've got a little thimble, just pop that on your pinky. And I always find that it just pushes the needle through really beautifully. But there is no right or wrong. You'll all find your, your own way of doing it. But it just means that you don't have to grab the end of the needle from this side and then pull through, which I find takes a little bit longer. I mean, when I say longer, it's split seconds, isn't it? But it just gives you that nice fluid movement. And everyone will find their own way of working, whatever works for you. Okay, so this is our second row of 15s. You will need um, four in total and your bead will be complete. So again, stepping up, going through that 15 the, uh, for the row that I have been working on now, you might find that with your size 15s, sometimes um, it takes a little bit um, longer to do because your tension, the holes get a little bit fuller. If that's the case and your needle isn't completely sliding through, because I've already gone through this bead twice, now I'm going through a third time. So just use your um, flat nose pliers to pull that through. If you don't have the strength in your hand, that is going to give you so much um, more strength than your hand could. 
Okay, last one. So I'm stepping up. And remember, you can count your 15s. This is now my second one. Oh, hey, we might as well just keep on going. I'll do one more and then we're done. Um, Because I'll show you how to finish your threads. Um, Doris says, Sarah, what started you on beading? Um, It was actually a complete mistake. Um, So I was at college... And I was looking for um, some little part-time jobs. Um, a friend of my mum's used to work for an American bead company and they started selling their kits in Hobbycraft. So at weekends, I would go around the country, go to Hobbycraft stores. They used to do a lot of... Um, in-store demonstrations and if they took on new suppliers I'm not even sure if they do in-store demonstrations anymore but they always used to set up these little tables I mean I am going back well I left school in 2000 so 20 years Yes, it must be 19 years ago um, so I would uh, go around to my mum's friends she would teach me a beading technique and teach me the kit that I would then be demonstrating and I would go and sit um, travel down to the hobby craft stores and I would go and sit there and just bead all day um, and show people how to master the kits what the kits would show them what they would be making so really exactly what I do now demonstrating with beading um, and then the um, TV side of it came in by complete mistake so I did QVC a few times QVC was um, quite easy actually because you only had 10 minute slots so again we would go in you would only have 10 minutes to show X amount of kits and to do a little demonstration. And that was it. You were in and out. Um, when the company moved over to Create and Craft, um, my sister actually was meant to be doing a show and she was poorly. So I had to cover for her. And I was absolutely petrified at the thought of having to talk for an hour because I'd only ever done these 10 minute slots. And I thought, how on earth am I going to be able to talk for an hour? I mean, look at me now, right? You can't shut me up after an hour. Um, but I was so nervous. Um, I actually had Martin Parker for my first show. It was beaded Christmas decorations. And we sold out of the entire show in 20 minutes. So they cut my show short, I was finished, and they had to bring on the next supplier. So I was over the moon. Even now, so that was, that was probably, mm -hmm, that was probably about 11 years ago. And um, bless Martin, every time I have a show with him, he still says, oh, I remember your first show, you were so nervous and we did so well. <laughs> it's very funny. So we still talk about it now. Um, yeah, and then I've been on uh, on Create and Craft um, ever since, pretty much every Wednesday. Uh, so I was doing the beading hours every Wednesday for years and years and years. Um, and now, obviously, I, I've started demonstrating for a few other companies as well. So, yeah, beading has always been my passion. Completely fell upon it by mistake. You know when you have these situations where it's just right place, right time. Uh, it was very much one of those things for me and um, beading and working for these companies has just opened up so many opportunities for me. It was really fabulous. Okay, so there we go. I only have um, two more rows to do. I'm not going to bother doing them because um, it's just a complete pattern repeat. But you can see now what we've got is um, the super duos will sit in the um, middle circumference of our wooden beads down to the size eights, down to your four rows of size 11s and then down to your four, four rows of size 15s and you will close up in the very centre. You'll only do that with two little rows so it's nice and simple. And then, of course, that will expose the outer side of the bead so that you can thread it on. You'll then take your other side of your thread work. Remember that bit that we cut off of our bobbin? If I pull this nice and tightly, you'll see that that will pull it nicely around the bead like so. So you can see exactly how that's going to come together. And then you will just completely repeat on this side of the bead. Obviously keep your bead in there at this point and then just make sure that um, you keep it nice and straight as well so that you're always beading around and that hole is going to be exposed. And that's it guys. So it looks so intricate, it looks so detailed, 
but actually it's super simple to do. Now, obviously this isn't symmetrical because I did add on a separate color just to show you that step, but the kits that we have available on the website today, we've got the dark blue, which is this one. Um, you actually get, in fact, that's the one that I've been using. You do have a lovely um, almost iris finish in those. You've got beautiful color and of course your seed beads. We have the amethyst, which again gives you three different colors of your super duo. So you can start mixing and matching them. You could do different colors. If you wanted to do it so that you had a different color through the center, those first 40 that you add on, you will just pick up alternate colors. So in your 40, you would have 20 dark and 20 light because remember we flip-flopped them left and right, didn't we? To give you your center. Um, we also have the hematite. This is the one... I think it was Ian, oops, sorry, Ian who said he'd just bought it. This is the hematite one. And again, your necklaces come in the sets as well. So you've got the lovely barrel on one side, the screw tip on the other. So even when it's around your neck, just a couple of screws and turns of that will hold it on nice and tightly. Remember, if you can't undo them when you get them, because remember, and for goodness sake, I'm in my late 30s, but I still do lefty loosey, righty tighty. So if you're twisting it to the left and it's not undoing, you're going the wrong way. So just turn it around. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. So right to tighten it up, left to loosen it. And then you will have in your hematite, you've got the beautiful silver, you've got the matte black and you have sort of the gunmetal grey. That's your hematites. Remember, the kits are... Um, slightly different prices because of the finishes of the beads. Um, but when you are at checkout, add in the code SUPER to your discount code and you will get 15% off all of the kits. You can also get extra wooden beads. Um, three of them are just a pound. And in your sets, you will have absolutely everything that you need. The only thing you need to um, add in is your needle, my arch nemesis. <laughs> okay, so hope you really enjoyed today. Tomorrow we are going to be doing um, Kumihimo. So I'm going to be using some of our lovely hematite beads. We've got some beautiful finishes. Um, Lucy says, thank you for spending time with us again. Great tutorial. Lucy, you are more than welcome. Um, I think my husband quite is like just having an hour to himself and he, all he does is sit in the bedroom because he keeps the dogs quiet for me. <laughs> um, so you are more than welcome. Um, I love chatting to you all in the mornings. It's really lovely and I'm glad I'm helping you. Um, do let us know what else you've been making. If you head over to the Totally Beads Facebook page, which is where you will find this video, it will be uploaded and you will have it there forever. Of course, if you share it, you will have also it, um, the video will be bookmarked on your own homepage. You can also save the videos to find at a later date as well. Um, for anyone who missed it, yesterday we were making the arrowhead earrings and necklaces. Um, if you pop onto the website, thank you, Dee. She says, great demo, see you tomorrow, thank you. Um, if you um, pop onto the website, onto the Facebook tutorials where I showed you where the kits are for today, you will be able to have a look at all the techniques we have followed over the the last 13 weeks believe it or not um pamela says this is going to be an interesting going for me enjoyed the tutorial thank you very much um jody says magnetic hematites or normal for tomorrow just normal no magnetic ones yet but i do think kitty is going to add it onto her list um mandy says love your earrings thank you yes this was the make yesterday i showed you how to graduate the arrow beads um and to make them into a nice little pair of earrings um, and we also made a chain necklace as well. Um, thank you all so much for your lovely comments. If you pop onto the Facebook page, you will find the event section. That will give you all of the techniques that we are covering over the next two weeks, I think. Um, and you will also be able to find the Totally Handmade group. Um, there are over a thousand of you. I think we're nearly up to 1500 people in there now, actually. Um, everybody's sharing pictures of their makes, perhaps their own take on some of the patterns, their favorite makes uh, from lockdown. Adelina, thank you as ever. No, thank you for joining us. Um, Marie says, I love these videos. They give me time out. Me too. It just makes me sit down, which I do not do very often. Um, so I do love sitting down and just having a nice little chit chat with you all. Um, and I love that you, do, you don't mind my little quirky, crazy moments. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I will see you all tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. We're going to be doing beaded kumihimo. A few of you have been stuck on it. So 
Stick with me for tomorrow morning, beaded kumihimo. Um, get all of your questions in as well um, early on in the video tomorrow while I'm still looking at the screen. Um, if you have any questions, I will try to incorporate any of the difficulties that you are having into the tutorial itself so I can answer you guys as I go along. Really looking forward to tomorrow. Julie says, really enjoyed today, giving me something new which is easier than I first thought. So thank you. Exactly the same, Julie. When I looked at these um, years ago when I saw beaded beads I just thought oh good grief that's like end goal seed bead weaving is an end goal for me to be able to achieve you know I could only hope to get there um and I soon realized having done just a couple of little projects that it is actually super simple um Lindsay says have a great day everyone thank you so much um love chatting to you all I will see you tomorrow morning size 10 at uh, size 10 <laughs> that's because I just read Doris what size beads will we be using tomorrow um I have a whole host of beads to be using tomorrow tomorrow and um, the hematites I think I'm going to be using a size four I've got them here somewhere um a four millimeter okay so lots of things to do for tomorrow I will see you all then 10 o'clock take care everybody stay safe have a lovely day yeah four mil hematite um have a lovely day and I will see you tomorrow love to you all take care